much of you Up I'll there. ask for it. First door you come to. Yeah, thanks. I didn't come up the river in a canoe, you know. Sure, we saw this out. You better sort it out, here and now. And you definitely closed the door properly. Didn't of course you? I closed the door properly. What sort of stupid question is that? Right, what seems to be the problem? I'm glad you're here. Well, problem? it seems that... Tell you what the problem is, lad. I've been robbed. That's the problem. Oi, what's going on? Someone's going to need that desk. Oh, not at the moment, It's always the same, isn't it? Every time they get a bit of extra desk space, someone comes along and dumps their rubbish on Anyway, it's already been got at. Someone's nicked the filing tray and the stapler. Well, it's not me. Yeah, all right, it was me. Well, mine are duff. Anyway, Ted won't need it, will he? Jim, the attack on that sub-post office in Florida Road. Donna's got a couple of names that match up the descriptions. Right. So you're going to chat them up now? If we can find them, yeah. I heard they were armed. They were, with a knife. Yeah, well, take it easy, eh? I don't need anybody else going AWOL. I had just been out for a pint and a breath of fresh air. Didn't have a lot of luck, did I? How do you mean? Because the beer is not beer and the air is not fresh. That's what I mean, boy. Not around here. I took my jacket off, put the money on the table. I went in there for a wash. When I came out, the little sort of grabbed the paper money. And then he hung one on me, caught me here. And this happened when? Exactly 37 minutes ago. You feeling okay? No, I'm not feeling okay. I'm angry, very angry. Nearly 75 pounds in fivers and tenors that little tyke took off me. Could you describe your attacker, sir? He was white, age about 25, dark head, no distinguishing facial marks. You taking this down? Yeah. Oh, good. He's wearing a black jacket, not a windsheeter, full length jacket, plus light blue jeans, and what looked like black trainers. Oh, for the record, my name is George Taft. Home address 24 Brook Avenue, Mossbridge, Pembrokeshire. You're a long way from home, Mr. Taft. Are you in London on business? I am retired. Oh? From the force, where I spent 33 working years. The best of those years being when coppers were real coppers, and when policewomen were making the tea and seeing kids across the road, instead of standing around helping their office to ask daft, stupid questions. So where did this happen, then? At the Lodge Hotel, Oak Road. I knew you were working on a couple of cases where people have been enrolled in hotels, so I thought I'd let you know. Yeah, thanks, mate. What about the victim? No, you're gonna love him. Some old apple knocker from the sticks. Used to work in the force when they had wooden boots and bells on top of cars. Is he all right? Yeah, took a smack in the face, that's all. So where is he now, then? Uh, Kathy Marshall's taking details in the hotel on the Socko's down there. Right, well, look, I've got a full workload on at the moment, but I'll get along there as soon as I can, OK? All right. Cheers. There's an emergency exit just across the corridor. It leads straight out onto the street. Yeah, I know. I saw it earlier. Thanks. So you've got all the civvies doing the hard work for you these days, eh? Well, it helps the clear-up rate. Is that what you call it? Mr. Taft, are you sure you closed this door properly? Of course I'm sure. I mean, I know they're self-closing, but sometimes they need just a bit of a nudge. A bit of a nudge? Let me tell you something, love. I know all about bedroom doors. I forced open more bedroom doors on and off duty than you've had prawns for tea. Now, uh, why don't you and me start doing something that we should have been doing a quarter of an hour ago? Mm -hmm. Talking to the hotel staff. Oh, don't worry, sir. That'll be dealt with. And someone from CID will be down here. Another female? No. Oh, well, that'll make a change, would it? The information was wrong, that's all. Your information. No, Gov, the collator's information. Ah, don't you blame her. You and Woodsy walked out of this room all suited up without double-checking your facts. No, oh, Gov. Which is very like you, isn't it, James? I mean, you hear the words, but you don't always get the message. Gov, we were given the facts. Hey, hang on, will you? I get enough of other people's arguments at home. Look, two front runners, according to Donna. So what happens when we try to house them? We find out they're both in the merchant. One sale two weeks ago, the other's been at sea nearly three months. 
We were better off when Ron Smollett ran the collator's office. Oh, yeah? So what's happened to you, then? Become chauvinistic all of a sudden? Oh, don't be stupid, Don't Gar you call me stupid. I'm sorry. Look, Donna Harris knows facts and figures. She's good at it. Ron Smollett knows people. Now, that's the difference. Really? Well, let me share this with you. Where are you going? I'm on late turn, aren't I? I volunteered for it. Just to get a bit of peace and quiet. Hello. So no police. Oh, your people have just left. Yes, I know. The guest that was attacked. Mr. Taft? Yes, Mr. Taft. I'd like a word with him, please. He's through there, waiting for the bar to open. So when did he book in? Yesterday lunchtime. Has this sort of thing happened to you before? What sort of thing? Well, guest being robbed. Oh, never. Thanks. Excuse me. Yes? I know it's not really your problem, but I wouldn't be at all unhappy if Mr. Taft could be persuaded to find himself in another hotel. Why? One or two guests have complained about him. And he's been upsetting the staff. By doing what? By being... well, let's say by being outspoken. Yes, you're right. It's not my problem. All I want is a drink. I don't want nuts in a bowl. I don't want music. I don't even want native belly dancers. All I want is a pint of beer. I'm sorry, sir. The bar don't open till six. Oh, till six? Let me tell you something, love. In my hometown, I can knock on the back door of any hotel at any hour of the day and get myself a drink. Look, if you'd just like to come through to the lounge area, I'll get the waitress to bring you a drink. No, thank you. I don't wish to wait in any poxy lounge. And I don't need a waitress. Well, not for that, anyway. Mr Taft? Uh, who the hell are you? Detective Constable Lyons, Sunil Police. So what have you done wrong? Done wrong? Still a detective constable at your age. You must have done something to deserve that. Well, when I put all the information together, Mr. Taft, you'll do nothing. No? Look, son, I know more about this sort of job than you do. <sighs> These crimes don't show up on anybody's batting averages, not in London. I wouldn't say that. I would. Me and my 75 pounds will soon be forgotten. Why are you bothering yourself? This is a uniform job. I've been dealing with some similar cases. In hotel rooms? Yeah, a fella and a girl. Working as a team. She chats up whoever. Stupid old bucks like me. Visitors. This couple's MO is targeting out-of-town people on their own. The girl gets invited into a hotel room. She leaves the door on the latch. The fellow comes in and commits the robbery. Oldest trick in the book. Yeah, but it still works. A lot of men on their own in a strange city are vulnerable. And Crumpet is still Crumpet, eh? Oh, yes. Crumpet is still Crumpet. No, son. No, back to the pavilion for you. The Torag that rolled me over was working on his own. Then you tell me about it. And waste valuable drinking time? Yeah. Come on. I hear you're in the force. That's right. Hey, hang on a minute. I'm sorry. I spent 20 years in the same town. Finished up as a detective sergeant. That did it. Didn't need any more. Maybe you should have tried traffic. So what are you doing in London? I'm looking for my daughter. You mean she lives here? Yeah. So what does she do? I don't know. I haven't seen her for 11 years. Hey, that, uh, that piece that came to the hotel with your policewoman, the one with the magic box of tricks, what's she called? Scenes of crime, officer. That's a daft description, if I've ever heard one. Still, she's, uh, she's a bit of all right, isn't she? Mr Taft. I like them slender. The nearer the bone, the sweeter the meat. Would you please put your money away, Mr Taft? Don't worry about me, boy. Not the first time I've been to London, you know. I spent six months in the depot in, uh, in Woolwich Barracks. National Service, uh, 1948, that was. And you've not been back to London since then? I haven't had any need to. Yes, sir? Uh, not until now, that is. <sighs> uh, point the best bitter and a large navy rum, please. What about you? No, not for me, thanks, no. I'm still working. So what? All right, then, yeah, I'll have a half, please. Uh, half of ordinary. Oh. Do you have an address for this daughter of yours? Yes, I have an address. 
I'm sorry, love, are you sitting here? Yeah, I was. Doesn't matter. Of course it matters. Mr Taft. Come on, sit here with me. I don't bite. Except in the right places. Leave it out, eh, Dad? What? You heard him. No, I didn't hear him. I said leave it out. Otherwise, I'm going to have to thump you. And I don't want to have to thump an old man, all right? Mr Taft? The name is George. All right, then, George. Me and you, George, are going to sit over there. I'll take this. Now, come on. I'm sorry. What's your daughter's name? Denise. Oh, this is uh, where she was living when I last heard from her. What, 11 years ago? Yeah. Elcott Gardens. What sort of place is it? Oh, it's a good address. So why did your daughter come to London in the first place? To make a career for herself. My wife died six weeks ago. I'm sorry to hear that. She was a good woman, fine woman. Hard-working. Always looked after me. Do you have any other children? No. Just the one girl. Fancy a pint? No, thanks, Gov. I've still got a few things to sort out. Oh. Peaceful enough in here for you now, is it? Yeah. Only we haven't seen you for a couple of hours. Thought you might have changed your mind and gone home to face all that chaos and noise you're always complaining about. No. I've been sorting out some old hillbilly ex-copper. A DS from the old days called Taft. He's down here looking for his long-lost daughter, but this bloke is a walking time bomb. Things happen to him, and if they don't, he goes looking for him. Taft? Yeah. T-A-F-T. Maybe he spelt his name wrong. It's probably your missus. You in? No. Anyway, I took this bloke to his daughter's address. I left him there. Best place for him. Sonny or CID? Yeah. yeah. Where? It's for you, the Russell Club. The what? The message is they'll speak to no one but you. The Russell Club? It's your mate, Taft. He's in trouble. Well, old geezer like that, world to us, you don't expect problems, do you? Uh, no. Then he starts causing trouble. What sort of trouble? Uh, chatting up the women, threatening the fellas who was with him. When we ask him to leave, he tells us he's a copper. He was a copper. And what's the difference? You know, Ah! Good to see you again. What are you going to have to drink? Just get him out of here, will you? Come on, George. Doesn't need it, pal. No, just leave it. Don't tell me to leave, leave it. it. Please, get him out of here. Come on, George, this way. Out. You're trash, you know that? And not only are you trash, you're a bigger pansy than that tart of you. Come on, you plump. Oh, you've picked on a good place here, haven't you? Eh? There's more art cases in here than you've got in the whole of Pembrokeshire. <laughs> Share us from DC Lines. Yeah, that's good, Yeah, I need some assistance outside the Russell Club, Galata Street. Right, what you got, Tosh? It looks like it could get a bit naughty here. I need some backup now. I'll be walking towards Hoxton Road through the car park. Yeah, all received, Tosh. Any units, uh, can assist? I've just about had enough of you, Mr Taff, for one night. What about your daughter? What about her? I left you on her front doorstep, remember? 27B Elcott Gardens. I went out of my way to get you there. So why aren't you still there with your feet up, instead of spreading yourself around Sun Hill's nightlife? Because she doesn't live in Elcott Gardens anymore, that's why. She left there five years ago. Five years ago? So there's no chance of a forwarding address then? Yes, yes, there is. Come on. Come in, Grain Dave. Let's have you. George? Leave this to me, son. This is my fight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what about you two? What's going on, then? It's all right. Just call an ambulance. Just a bit of self-defence, love, that's all. 
Yeah, Is that right, Tosh? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Self defence. Strong coffee, drink it. So your daughter's living in Park Mead, eh? According to the people I spoke to, yes. Right, when you've drunk that, I'm going to take you there. Only this time, I'm going to take you to the door and I'm going to wait until somebody opens it. Now, you got that? Yeah. Have you got a family? Yeah, five kids. Five? Yeah. <laughs> you must have been going at it like a ferret. So why is it that you and your daughter have not kept in touch for the past 11 years? I've already told you we... Uh, well, we weren't sophisticated enough for her. She wanted to better herself. As a result of that, we... Uh, we just didn't get on. What about your wife? Well, she always agreed what I had to say. She had to. I was the breadwinner. Has it never occurred to you, George, that times have changed? I mean, I'm not just talking about the police force, I'm talking about people. Attitudes have changed. No, that has never occurred to me. No. Well, your daughter obviously sussed it out a long time ago, didn't she, eh? Otherwise, why would she have left home? And what makes you think she's going to come back with you now, after all this time? She's got to, hasn't she? Why? To look after me, of course. I'm on my own now, aren't I? Oh, right. Yeah. Is this it? Yep. Are you sure? Well, it's the only part of the estate we've got. Yes? Denise? Dad? Yes, it's me. I don't believe it. What are you doing here? Can we come in, love? What? Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. But what do you want? What do you think I want? I'm here to see you. In here. This is crazy. After all this time? So, how are you? Me? I'm fine. Only I've not heard from you. Never heard from you. I wrote to Mum a couple of times. Yes, but not to me. Well, we never really got on, did we, Dad? No. No, I suppose not. Well, your excuse for leaving home 11 years ago was to uh, better yourself. What went wrong? A lot of things went wrong. Yes, I can see that. And is that why you've come all this way? To tell me that? No. I want you to come home, Denise. Go back home? You must be kidding. Are you a friend of his? No, love. Well, whoever you are, try talking sense to him, will you? I never could. Denise? I left home all those years ago because of you, Dad. Because of the way you behaved. Messing about with any young tart you could lay your hands on. In a little town like that, where everyone talked. You made a fool of me. And Mum. But you made an even bigger fool of yourself. Well, I've... Uh, I've changed. Oh, no. You may be older now, but you'll never change. I can try. Can't I? All right. Will you please keep your voice down? No, I will not keep my voice down. The kids are asleep. Kids? What kids? Mine. You mean you're married? No. I was. Will you please take him home? Please. But if you've got kids, they're mine too, aren't they? We're talking about grandchildren here. If your mother was alive. What do you mean? Was alive? Uh, look, I'll, um, I'll just went outside, OK? I'm afraid your mother died. When? Six weeks ago. 
And no one thought of telling me? I couldn't tell you, could I? I mean, I couldn't call you. Is she coming home? She said she'd come down and visit sometimes with the kids. Do you believe her? George, do you mind if I ask you something? No. Well, there's something been troubling me all evening. What's that? You call the person who attached in the hotel little tyke, yeah? Mm, that's right. He, he was. Yeah? Well, by that you meant he was small. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, that's fine. But you see, the thing that worries me is, if you can handle yourself like you did in the car park, how come you let yourself get turned over in the hotel? What is this? A hands-up job? I think so, yeah. Don't you? All right. I lied to you, sir. So you didn't get attacked in the hotel room? That's right, I wasn't attacked. What happened? Oh, come on, George. I've been with you all evening. It feels like a lifetime. It also means I know your form. It was a girl, wasn't it? And you let her into your hotel room, didn't you? Yeah. So where do you pick her up, then? In the street? <laughs> In a tea bar. In a tea bar? Now, that does make a change. That's almost civilised, George. I took her back to the hotel. Just a young slag. I don't know why. I don't think I could even manage it anymore. I just needed some company, that's all. Her company. And she grabbed your money? Yes, when I was in the bathroom. I ran after her into the corridor making noises. The manager arrived. I told her the same lie as I told you. I had to. It was she who phoned you lot, not me. And you had to go along with it all? Yeah. I'm sorry I messed you about that. But I just wanted a bit of company, that's all. I think it's time, don't you? Time? What for? George! Do us one favour, will you? Stay out of the Buffy car!